Hello and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to use remote functions in Roblox. Specifically, we're going to use a client to server to client remote function. On the server side, in my workspace, I have three different parts. I have part A, part B, and part C. On the client side, inside the started GUI, I have a screen GUI which contains a text label. Also, I have a local script. Now, if this local script wants to change the color of this brick, this part B here, it's not going to be able to do it on its own. It's going to need the help of a script from the server side. To do that, it can either use a remote event, as we have seen in our prior tutorials, or it can use a remote function if it wants a call back or a return value from the server side. To use remote functions, first let's go to replicated storage. We're going to add a remote function. If you don't see remote function, you can search for it in the search object box. Otherwise, just select it from the list. This here is the new remote function that I've just added. Now we're going to go to a local script. Inside of the started GUI, we're going to trigger that remote function. On the first line here, I'm declaring my remote function. So this variable here, now it's gonna represent my remote function inside the replicated storage. Notice I'm using wait for child, just to wait for the remote function here to load. Here, we're just gonna wait for 10 seconds before we invoke that remote function. To invoke the remote function, I use colon invoke server. This remote function is going to return a value, which I'm assigning to this variable, or in this case, it is the background color of the text label. Let's now go to our script inside of server script service. To bind a remote function to a local function, you start with the remote function, followed by dot on server invoke, and you set it equals to the name of the local function. Here is my local function. All I'm doing is I'm declaring my part B, and then I'm changing the brick color of part B to a random brick color. And then I'm returning the color of part B. This value is gonna be returned back to the local script here, and then it's assigned to the background color of the text label. The end result, you're gonna see both the label and this brick is gonna have the same random color. Let's now play and take a look. Here we are. So you can see the brick is red right now and the label is white. And give it a few seconds for it to change. And there it is. So the random color is green and both the label and the brick end up with the same color. If you want to use remote functions with parameters, you just do it this way. For example, here I'm going to pass a parameter I'm going to pass part C, which is the part that I want the server to change the color. Now notice on the local side, we're only passing one single parameter. But on the server side, you're going to end up with two parameters. Because the first parameter is going to be the player. The one who is invoking this remote function. And the second parameter is going to be this one that we're passing from the local side. So the second one, let's call it part name. Here, instead of declaring the part to be part B, I'm going to change this to game.workspace, colon, find first child, and the child is going to be part name. And here we're just going to change its brick color to a random color, and then we're returning back the color. Again, let's play and take a look. So now instead of part B, we're expecting part C here on the right and the label to have a different color. And give it a few seconds, there it goes, they both turn brown. Everyone, that's how we use remote functions in Roblox. 
In this case, it's client to server to client. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you again soon.